All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually have the one and only, a phenomenal hip-hop artist. We have the one and only Dreamer Black right here, live on the line. How are you doing this evening? I'm good, man. How you feeling, bro? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Best as I can be, man. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the news, man, and I saw that... Uh, uh, the U.S. is actually starting to open back up, man. So that's actually really good. That you, it, it, talented individuals like yourself can get back to putting on amazing concerts. Yeah, man. I'm out in Texas. You know, it's been it's been open for a minute. You know, what I'm saying I've been out here about four months now. So yeah, yeah, definitely uh, wide open, bro. You know, but but still, you know, I still advise everybody to uh, be as safe as you can. You know, to make sure that you know you uh, stay healthy. Yeah, man, uh, Texas has ha- actually has been open for a long time, man. I'm not going to lie. Texas has always been one of those states that I've always noticed that it's always kind of kind of a little rogue, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 for real, for real. But also, man, I want to take you back to the beginning of your amazing career, man. And I have to ask first and foremost, man, like, what made you decide to get into the music industry initially? Well, I mean, the music has been something that's always been in my family. Um, you know, to my grandmothers, all of my grandmothers' brothers were musicians. And before I actually started rapping, um, I played. I played the trumpet. I was in. A, I was in a band when I was ten years old. It wasn't until I was twelve that uh, one of my neighbors actually uh, wrote a rap for me, and uh, and you know taught me how to say it and everything. And you know, I just kind of fell in love with the craft of. Uh, of uh, rhyming words, you know what I'm saying. And I have to ask, man that that uh, that song that your neighbor wrote for you. Did you ever actually put uh, that writing actually into a song? Did you ever actually turn that into audio? No, I actually didn't, man. But I was digging. I was digging through through uh, some of my stuff, you know, from when I was a kid, and I actually still have the same uh, rap that uh, he wrote me, man. And, and it really tripped me out because I had. And also, as well, man, uh, June seventh of two thousand eighteen, you were actually featured on Cali Al's single titled "They." The, sorry, they don't know. I was wondering, how did yourself and him get connected? And of course, what was it like just being in the studio collaborating with Al? Oh uh, man, you know, Al's my boy, man. You know, I've known him ever since he was fifteen years old. You know, we were about seven years apart, and uh, you know, he didn't used to rap at first. You know, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, that's my boy, man. You know, we we got a lot of history together, you know, and uh, uh, I'm I'm very I'm very proud of uh, of the man that he's become, you know, and the artist that he's become this far, man. Because I I seen him go through a lot of ups and downs, you know, and he's the one that actually got me. <laughs> he told me about this uh, program that I'm using called uh, Garage Band, and that's that's what I record on, you know, at the moment, you know, man. So yeah, I, I'm definitely. Yeah, GarageBand has actually been out for a, for a minute now, man. But it is a phenomenal platform, man. It definitely gives gives all artists tons tons of different resources to actually just to get the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, for real. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I got a I got an Apple iPad, so that's what I record on. And then I just recently invested a sizable amount of money for my stimulus, you know, to make sure that uh, I can, you know, uh, craft craft my sound better because. Uh, uh, I, I started recording on earbuds, you know what I'm saying? And I came a long way from there, so now I got an actual interface and a microphone, so I'm trying to, you know, um, put out the best sound that I can, you know. And also as well, man, speaking of putting on the best sound, man, in April 17th of 2019, you actually had the opportunity to perform at Coast to Coast Live in Los Angeles, California. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about that event, and of course, what was it like actually partaking in the largest artist showcase in the world? Oh uh, man, you know what? It, it was a it was an eye opener for me, you know, because I I didn't realize how how big of a event it was until I actually got there, and it was a lot of a lot of good talent there, man. A lot of a lot of guys, you know, who who you know deserve to be there, you know what I'm saying? And I felt like I was very fortunate to be in the um, in the shoes of a person, you know, who actually had the opportunity to be in front of all of those people and showcase my skills, you know. So, 
yeah, that was the, that was a very um, exciting opportunity for me. And then <clears throat> shortly after that, I was doing shows through um, Afton, Afton shows, um, uh, uh, you know, and I, I got a chance to, you know, do um, a lot of shows. I got a lot of shows under my belt, I'd say, through 2018 until 2000, early 2021, you know, working with uh, Rick Hard. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's one of the big L.A. promoters. Another one is um, <clears throat> my boy Young Baca Productions. You know, he's another promoter. So, you know, as far as the underground scene, man, I always try to stay abreast of, you know, things that were going on and try to participate in as many shows as possible. But Coast to Coast is definitely the biggest one. And I have to ask, man, but just pertaining to Coast to Coast, like, uh, what other artists were actually on the same card as you? Because I do know with some of those festivals, man, they actually have a lot of a lot of other tremendous talents. Oh, uh, man, let me tell you, man, it, it was it was too many to name, you know, to be to be completely honest with you. I mean, it, it was such a big thing, you know. I, I, I didn't, I mean, I went in with the mentality like I wanted to win. Obviously, everybody wants to win the competition, but, I mean, it was just, have done numerous projects with OC the general man I was wondering how did yourself and o, uh, sorry OC initially get connected and of course do you guys actually have any current projects currently in the works right now oh yes we do man you know it's funny that you said that because I was on reverb nations for a long time I mean I started off recording songs on my phone on some reverb nation and one day out of the blue OC the general contacted me, right? He hit me up through Messenger. So he's like, yeah, man, you know, I dig your sound. You know, let's do a song together. So I said, okay, you know, but uh, not that I brushed him off. It's just I had a lot going on. So a couple of months had passed and I didn't get on the song. And eventually, you know, um, um, he hit me back, you know, and, and I wound up getting on the song. And um, OC the general is from Los Angeles, but he lives in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And let me tell you, man, I've never met the dude face-to-face. -face. We've never met in person. We have a catalog of over 50 songs, almost almost 100 songs together. I mean, we're actually in a group called COD. If you look, if you look through my catalog, you'll, you'll see, or even if you look up OC The General, you'll see COD. That stands for Cali Al, OC The General, and Dreamer Black. We are a group. We just released our second album called The Vaccination. You know what I'm saying? You can go you can go get that. Our first one is called My Own Man. You know, but um O C the General has been pivotal. He's been pivotal in um uh being a great producer, being a great mentor to me and you know, the guy's younger than me, you know, and I, I definitely um have learned a lot from him as far as, you know, um how to um how to craft my style, you know, and how to how to be more how to be more uh affluent in my and my lyrics, you know, and how to um, how to really showcase my talents to the to the to, to the fullest extent, you know. So yeah, I definitely um, want to give a shout out to OC, the General, Cali Al, like them, my boys, COD, you know what I'm saying, uh, Scoopville Records, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely taking over shit. And I also noticed as well that you guys actually did a collaboration with uh, MC8 of Compton's Most Wanted not too long ago, man. It must have been must have been dope to actually get such a, get such a tremendous California hip hop legend up on one of your songs. Yeah, yeah, man. We got a chance to uh, work with MC8, Spice One, um, uh, uh, Corrupt from the Dog Pound. You know what I'm saying? We got uh, a couple a couple well known features that uh, haven't even been released yet. That are that are gonna be coming out really soon. You know, I'm, I'm not sure if it's gonna come out under the group or under OC the General's album, but uh, yeah, yeah, we 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 uh, definitely did. 
did some did some well known features and are looking to do more features with uh anybody, you know, from from that era, from our time frame, because if you listen to my music you you'll notice that all of my stuff is like, you know, kinda nineties death row era ish, you know, so um it's not it's not no disrespect to the new generation and what they're doing, you know, because it's a lot of talented young brothers out here doing their thing, you know. But um, I try to I try to cater my music to a certain demographic or a certain age range of people, you know. what I'm saying that that um, I feel like it's still a lane for us to make that kind of music because I grew up listening to MCA, Constance, Most Wanted, Spice One, E40, uh, Brother Lynch, Hung, you know. Uh, um, all those guys, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg. I lived in Long Beach for a long time, man. You know, I mean, I went to high school there, so I see one, she all the time. You know, um, um, I've had the pleasure of being in the presence of, you know, some some uh, cats, you know, that, that ain't around no more, you know, including Tupac, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, very uh, dedicated to keeping that, that 90s style music alive. And when you actually said a few moments ago about Warren G, man, you actually had the opportunity to actually uh, take a photo as well with one of his protégés, man, uh, C. Knight of the Dove Shack. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, uh, C. Knight. Actually, um, it's, it's crazy because I lived, I lived in Las Vegas for a while. And um, uh, I met C. Knight's dad before I even met C. Knight. You know what I'm saying? So, um I had an opportunity to meet C Knight back then, you know, but apparently, you know, things things didn't go uh as planned, you know, but when the time is right I actually did a show in in um in Las Vegas and C Knight was there because that's where he lives at now. And uh yeah, yeah, I was able um I was able to get a picture with him, you know, get a flick, you know what I'm saying, chop it up with him for a minute. Real, real good, uh good grassroots type 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 uh, dude, you know what I'm saying, got a lot of experience and a lot of uh, guidance in the game. Yeah, I'm noticing as well, man, a lot of people have been moving from, like, California to Las Vegas, man. I don't know if the rent's cheaper or if the mortgages are cheaper, man, but people seem to be leaving uh, leaving the Sunshine State of California and actually heading on over to uh, Vegas. Yeah, it is. It, it is cheaper. Like, you know, as long as you go out there with your mind right, and you go out there with an agenda. You can't go out there trying to gamble and all that because you ain't going to make it. But if you go out there, you know, just, you know, trying to really get your stuff together and, you know, get noticed or whatever, you know, just to just to get a breath of fresh air, I mean, it's not it's not a bad place to live. I mean, I came all the way to Houston, man, you know, because not only was the rent cheap, you know, but I just, I just needed, you know, something, something different. You know, I mean, I'm born and raised in South Central, home. And where I was staying, that was a straight up war zone. I mean, anybody from LA know about the 100s over by Washington High. You know what I'm saying? I stayed on the 110th in uh, Normandy. You know what I'm saying? And it's on and cracking over there. You feel me? So um, uh, I got I got sons. You know what I'm saying? I got children that that um, I wanted to raise and show them a different a different type of lifestyle. So you know, I went on ahead and just uh, came down south. And you know, but everybody know I'm from LA. You know? <laughs> it ain't no secret. And also as well, man, February 26th of last year, you actually released a 20-track album titled Ain't Ya Homie. I was wondering, what's the story behind that amazing um, amazing album? And of course, where can we actually buy or stream it today? All right, so Ain't Ya Homie, you can, you can look up Dreamer Black on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. You can Google Dreamer Black and you'll find all of my music. Now, that... That that album there, you know, is uh, is my first, you know, actual album release. Um, it, it was one of the things where I wanted to get something out right away because OC the General <laughs> had been pressuring me to, you know, get something out. You know, I had on I had on a few singles, you know, and then I'm on a bunch of stuff on his albums. You know, what I'm saying make sure that y'all check out OC the General. You know, uh, T H A, not T H E, but OC the General. But yeah, um, uh, anyway, yeah. I, as far as that album, man, I mean, I, I didn't expect to have 20, 20 tracks on there. You know, um, a lot of those weren't really mixed and mastered the way that you know um, they should have been. So it's not, uh, it's not a bad album. You know, I mean, I'm proud. I'm proud of a lot of my work. You know, but I feel like the stuff that I've been putting out lately and the things that I'm working on now um, are, are are a much better quality than that particular album, but 
yeah, I mean, um, uh, as far as the concept, man, I mean, you know, with the with the uh, with the pancake syrup, you know, I was thinking about HMI pancakes. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, HMI homie is actually my clothing line. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's just you know something that I just put. I thought about that, and I thought about the idea and OC drew up the artwork. You know, we just ran with it. You feel me? But yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm dream of black ain't your homie. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's that just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You can find me uh, on all uh, social streaming platforms. I just released a song called Dear Amy. You know, I just released uh, uh, another song called Struggling and Striving, Hustling and Grinding. I got a couple singles up there, man. I'm working on I'm working on my second album. You know what I'm saying? My uh, title minus emotion, which will probably be uh, dropping for the new year. And also as well, man, September 17th. Uh, so just just weeks ago, man, you actually released your most recent single, excuse me, titled Dear Amy. I was wondering for the listeners that haven't had the opportunity to listen to this amazing song, what can they actually expect from it when I play it here moments after our interview this evening? Well, that's actually a true story. Um, the lady that I'm dating at the moment, um, we have a history of 28 years, and we knew each other when she was 13 and I was 14. We used to date, and, um, you know, um, terrible circumstances, you know, uh, caused me to be foolish enough to break up with her. And um, and the way that I that I did, you know, was, wasn't really the best. So uh, we just recently, you know, reconnected, you know, and uh, got back together after 28 years. And it's crazy because it's like I told you, I had that uh, rap, my homie wrote me the first rap. I was digging through the same crate, and I found a letter that she wrote me when she was 13, and that's what motivated me to write that song, you know what I'm saying? So I dedicated the song to her, you know what I'm saying? That's my baby, Amy Jolly, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's a very heartfelt and uh, touching song, you know. I, I feel like um, a lot of people can relate to the things that I'm, that I'm saying in, in, in that song if you've been in my situation with that uh, love that you lost, you know what I'm saying, that uh, you, you really didn't have to, you know what I'm saying, that you just kind of went the wrong direction at the time. But I got to ask, Dreamer, what is next for yourself, man? Like, um, is there anything we missed during this interview, anything else you still want to talk about or promote? Or well, we still got you here live on the Canadian FM frequency this evening. Yeah, man, I just, I just want to tell everybody, man, you know, me, OC the General, and Cali Al, man, you know, like I said, you know, if you if you really enjoy that authentic uh, West Coast ninety style music, you know, that that OG South Central, you know, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, NWA type shit, man, you need to listen to our shit, man, because you know that's 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 the direction where we're going, man. You know what I'm saying? And you know we gotta we gotta remember where the origins of gangster rap came from, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, no disrespect to these new cats, man. You know, I listen to a lot of these new cats, and they're very talented. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, um, it's like, you know, I feel like we don't give enough homage and enough respect to the OGs, man, the people that, that, that actually taught us how to do this. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why these cats are able to say the things and do, do the things and move the way that they move to this very day, man. You know, so I want to tell everybody, man, to go check out OC The General, Check out COD, check out Cali Al, you know, make sure that you Google us, man. Check us out on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, all the major streaming platforms, bro. And I, you will not be disappointed. Like, like we definitely got that got that flavor, you know what I'm saying? And feel free to leave a comment, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I mean, for real, for real. Because we ain't going nowhere. It is what it is. We, we, we ain't going to stop, you know what I'm saying? So, may as well get used to seeing us around. And also, Dreamer, this is a time in the interview, man, that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just like a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And I know you already dropped your Instagram, man, but if you can, drop the rest of your social medias as well. That way our listeners can follow you on all platforms and stay updated on everything Dreamer Black if they're not already doing so. Yeah, all right, man. Well, you can go on YouTube, you know, look up Dreamer Black, D-R-E-A-M-E-R-B-L-A-C-K. Uh, I'm on um, Instagram under Ain't Your Homie. 
That's A I N T C H A H O M I E. Um, uh, yeah, man, same thing. You know what I'm saying? If you if you look me up, then you'll find my camp. You know what I'm saying? My my uh, 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 homeboys. I'm on Facebook underneath my government name, Andre D. Harrison Senior. You know, um, yeah, yeah, man, definitely. You know, check me out, man. Check us out. Oh yeah, I want to give a shout out to my boy Nonsense Chris Nonsense and that Dorky Review Show. If y'all are in the review shows, I always submit my stuff into review shows, man. The best one on the West Coast, the one that I always fuck with, is my nigga Nonsense that Dorky Review Show. Make sure that y'all check him out, man. That's a good dude. He will play your music. He play my music. I mean, it's like a community of underground artists, man. We all get together, you know what I'm saying, and we submit our stuff and we critique each other, you know. So, yeah, yeah, you definitely want to want to do that, man. And I want to thank you, man. I want to thank you, man, for, you know, creating this uh, platform, man, and, and for reaching out, man. And, you, you know, it's very, very important, you know, to have um, – brother like you, you know what I'm saying, and do, doing, doing something like this, man, that's, that's uh, righteous, man, I appreciate your time. Hey, man, I appreciate your time as well, man, you know what I mean, I just love hip-hop, and I just love kind of, I just love giving back to a genre of music, man, that I, that I love so dearly, man, so, and you know what, you're a talented artist, man, and I love helping talented individuals, man, that still bring that real, raw, rugged flow and keep it going, man. So that, that's what I'm all about, man. So I appreciate your time as well, man, and just giving us a little bit of your time here in Canada this evening. Thank you, man. And, and you know, I mean, shout out to everybody in Canada, man. You know, I, I'll be out there one day, bro. We're going we gonna to turn up, for real, for real. South Central style. Hey, man, most definitely. It sounds like a plan, man. And we most definitely have the borders open for you whenever you do decide to slide on through. All right, for sure. You already know I'm going to hit you as soon as I pull up. Hey, man, most definitely. Sounds like a plan. I appreciate you, Dreamer, and definitely have yourself a wonderful night out there in Houston. All right, man, you too, man. God bless.